Thank you, Reverend Lisa. Well, good morning, church family. Happy New Year to all of you today. I tell you, this is a day that the Lord has made for us. It's a day that we are rejoicing and being glad therein. I want to thank Janetta for that wonderful, wonderful, wonderful <laughs> moment of praise. Thank you so much. A great talent. And, you know, it is just so good to start the moment with inspiration. So often, uh, you know, folk look forward for us to bring inspiration to you. But as we stand here, we need a little bit ourselves as well. So I'm grateful for the dose that you gave me this morning. <laughs> And also, I'm grateful for this wonderful topic that Reverend Lisa has shared with you this month, emerging as my Christ self. Why don't we just take a moment? I want to speak a word into the consciousness of this space. If you would all just kind of relax where you are and close your eyes and just let go. And allow yourself just to feel the presence of spirit right here, right now, as I speak this word today. There is a place within myself that is so pure and sacred, not swayed by error thinking and not moved by appearances and the opinions of others. This is the kingdom of God the dwelling place of God itself. It impacts every circumstance, vision, affirmation, and prayer treatment, which I accept. I consciously enter into this space through the power of the Christ as me. For this transformation, I am eternally grateful. I know without doubt it is done. And so it is. Emerging as my Christ self. You know, the Bible shares a story about a Jewish leader who came to Jesus one night. And in coming to him, he acknowledged that because of his teachings and demonstrations that he truly was a man of God. And Jesus looked at the man and he said to him, listen, Unless a man is born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. He stated that that which is born of flesh is flesh. But that which is born of the spirit is indeed spirit. You know, it is difficult at best for any of us to merge into a Christ in a consciousness without being born again. We can say we'd like to do it. Some of us may claim that we have done it. But unless we have had a spiritual rebirth, it is difficult. See, to be born of the Spirit is more than just reading the Bible or any other sacred book. It is more than just saying that you are a divine being and attend a spiritual center such as this. It's more than just being a part of a worship experience. But it's all about the conscious transformation of one's belief system and the acceptance of the operation of spiritual principles. A conscious transformation, I would like to think that that's one of the reasons or our primary reason for being here today. And not just only this day, but each and every time that we enter in, each time that we come, that we might be a participant in an experience like this, that we come expecting a transformation, that something about ourselves is going to shift, something about us and the way we think is going to change. And our expectation is that we will leave this moment entering into the next with a greater level and a greater appreciation of our real self and the knowledge that we have given space to this idea of Christ consciousness operating through us, as us, and by means of us. You see, you are aware of the things of the flesh, 
because you operate primarily from a carnal state of mind. The things that we can see, the things that we can hear, the things that we can touch, the things that we can smell, the things that we can taste, all of these things are physical, sensory items. And most often we operate our lives from those tools. We make our decisions based upon the validation of those things. These are the things that we allow to govern our lives. And see, we accept the fact that we were born into the human environment and therefore we understand that we are flesh. When there is pain, we acknowledge that there is pain in our body. If we fall and we get hurt, we understand that there is something that happens in that moment. Because we can see it, because we can feel it, we feel it from a physical place and from a physical perspective. However, as we evolve, we yearn for more. Something within us cries out and says, there is more. You know, this morning, as we were listening to Janetta and the band, and as they were giving us this worship experience, we were feeling something. You know, it was more than just what we heard, but we were feeling something at a place that was a lot deeper than our flesh. We felt something on our soul level, and it caused us to move. It caused us to be excited. It caused us to appreciate what was indeed happening. And that was all a part of our own spiritual evolution. See, there is something which we may not understand so completely, but it speaks out of the depth of our being, saying that there's more. And because we like what it is that we feel, we go in search of that more. In earnest expectation, we are seeking out the more. And that search, that perpetual search, has led us to this moment, has led us to become receptive to that something. And that something, we call it the spirit of God within us. It speaks to us very clearly as we open ourselves up to it. It moves us when we allow it to give us motion. It guides us to the place where we need to be guided to, and it constantly directs us when we allow it to do just that. And oftentimes, while we may not know exactly what's going on, we feel assured that whatever it is that's happening is for our highest good. See, the ancients in their writings, they said it this way. They said, the spirit of God within us bears witness to our spirit. And in that bearing witness to our spirit, it gives us validation that, yes, we are the sons of God. And if we are the sons of God, then, yes, we are the joint heirs of Jesus Christ. So something within us, on a spiritual level, lets us understand what it was that he was talking about. It makes us want to go in search of the more, this idea of being born of the spirit. Obviously, there's a benefit to it. Obviously, it causes us to reach a higher point of elevation within ourselves. And therefore, we go constantly in search. See, the urging which you feel is the resurrection power of the Christ seeking to rise from the dormancy into full power. Imagine that, something rising up within us, directing us to our higher good and the understanding of our higher self. But why? Why is that necessary? Because truly, we're really spiritual beings clothed in a flesh body. We've been born into a flesh experience, and we understand that. We were born into the human environment. We understand we came into this world through the natural process. Everyone that was born was born of a woman, and we understand that. There was this whole physical thing that happened 
But after that happens, something that we call life begins to move within us. And it's because of that thing that gives us a reason to live. Because once we take it away, there is no longer us. See, we need this transformation. We need this understanding of our spiritual self. We need to understand how we merge into this Christ self. We need it for the greater fulfillment of our journey. I want to say this word, and I want you to share it with me. I'm going to speak an affirmation this morning, and I'm going to speak it slowly so that you're able to hear it and that you're able to process it. And then I want you to make the same declaration back to me. And in doing this, I want you to do something for a moment. I want you to forget about who's sitting next to you. I want you to forget about the opinions of others. I want you just to focus on the self and what it is that you're saying because you're making a proclamation about the self. And here we go. Awaken thou which has been asleep within me. Let's try it once again. <laughs> Awaken thou which has been asleep within me. Rise up into this moment as that which I am. I am the glory of God made manifest as me. Now, what are we saying? We are telling something that has maybe been dormant within us to awaken. We want it to wake up and rise up. Because as it awakens and as it rises up, it reminds us that, yes, we are the glory of God. And we are that glory that's made manifest as that which we are. Imagine that. And we carry that which we are every day, whatever it is that we're doing, wherever it is that we may go. And when it is awakened, we awaken our power. We awaken the presence that has always been there. We awaken the demonstration of good. We awaken that which causes us to become an illumined being. We awaken that which unlocks the wisdom that has always been a part of our experience. We awaken talents that we did not even realize that we had. We awaken the visions that have been dormant within us for so long. We awaken greater good. And it only becomes awakened when we call it forth. See, you have to do something. It requires you to do something. There is an idea, a seed of greatness that has been planted within each of us. And that seed is dormant, waiting for you to call it forth. Now, as we've entered into this new year, we've entered into a new time, a new opportunity, a new moment. A time for us to walk into a greater power. A time for us to feel a greater power. A time for us to walk with greater presence. A time for us to feel this greater presence that is within us. A time for us to know that the God of ourself is looking to ourselves to come out of ourself. And we call it forth simply by saying, awaken. The writer of 1 John said it this way. He said, hereby we know that we abide in him. And he in us because he has given us his spirit. This is our validation. See, and that's the only validation we need. We don't need it from someone else. The validation has been given unto us that as we abide in this place, as we abide in this understanding, as we abide in this acceptance, Something lets us know that we are one, that it is abiding with us. 
And see, in the moment that we can receive this understanding completely, we will go through a process of release. Now I want you to think on that for a moment. All of 2022, you spent a whole lot of time visioning. All of 2022, you spent a lot of time in prayer treatment and affirmations. You set goals. Some were written, some were not. But you spent a whole year doing all of that. And this year, you let all of that go. No need to continue with that vision. No need to continue with that same prayer. No need to continue with that same affirmation. See, when we have done that, we've done that in the understanding that there is something within us that's going to empower it, that's going to take it from a place of our internal consciousness into an outward manifestation or a demonstration of its great good. But it cannot happen until you let it go, because until you let it go, you don't believe it. You said a lot of things. You've affirmed a lot of things. You visualize a lot of things, but you didn't believe any of it because you're still doing the same thing. <laughs> but now in this moment, in this year, it's called the creating capacity for more because you know you are dealing with something that is unlimited in its ability to provide you with good and it is limited only by you. It is limited only by you. If you are still holding on to that same vision, that means the others that are trying to rise up cannot. If you're still holding on to that same affirmation, that means the new ones that are trying to find life cannot. And if you are still saying that same prayer treatment, you've not believed anything that you've said, you've not believed anything that you've heard, and you have wasted your time. It's time to let it go. You know, release oftentimes is one of the most difficult things that we come to embrace. You know, as new students in the science of mind, as you go into the various steps of treatment and you get to release that part of it, is something that we have the most difficult with because we don't want to let go. We want to hold on. You know, we're really hoarders. <laughs> Spiritual hoarders. Not believing that there is more because we don't trust the very thing that we are affirming. We don't trust the very thing that we claim is life within us, using us as an avenue of expression. That's why sometimes we have to stop, we have to pause, we have to stand back, and we have to listen to what it is that we are saying. And as I gave you that affirmation a moment ago, I said, listen to me. I want you to process it before you say it. I want you to understand what it is that you are saying. Be clear of the words that you are speaking because what you are doing is you are speaking life and power into your own experience. But you have the gift. The anointing of God is upon all of us. And it has released us into this thing that we call our own lives to experience it. Imagine being set free in the presence of all the power and the glory that there is and being allowed to demonstrate that which we desire. And we decided to still limit ourselves, holding on to something we need to let go and allow it to unfold. Let that stuff go and make room for the new. Stop carrying last year's baggage. All those old goals, that's what they are, old goals. Release them. Now that you're in this new year, how about setting a new goal? Something different. There has to be more in your consciousness. Today I want everyone to do something. I want you to think of a new word, a new idea. And then I want you to speak it for 
yourself. Speak it for yourself. You don't have to share with anyone else. You don't have to come and make it a part of another experience. But I want you to speak it for yourself. And after you speak that word, then I want you to release that word that's spoken. You know why? Because there are other words that are lining up behind it. And they are seeking life as an experience for you as well. This one is the one that just has floated to the top right now. And so that's the one that you release in this moment. Now, when you do that, when you speak that word, and when you allow that word to come forward, here you become the evidence that you are merging really into your Christ self. Here's an instance where you have the validation that yes, I've had a spiritual rebirth because you know, I really trust God now because I'm more trusting of myself and we are one. This word didn't just originate within me alone. There's something else. There's something stirring within me. And this combination caused this word to surface. And this is a part of my Christ self. I want you to imagine this for a moment. A caterpillar never thought it could fly. Think on that. A caterpillar never thought it could fly. It thought that it would crawl its entire life. But then one day it realized that it had power within itself. Imagine that discovery. Realizing that it had power within itself. So what it did at some moment, it went within. And in going within, it pulled out strength. And that strength that it pulled out of itself, it wrapped itself up with it. And after wrapping itself up with the strength that it pulled out of the core of its own being, it stayed there and it meditated. It stayed there and it meditated. Then at the appointed time, when the meditation was over, it emerged triumphant. It was born again. But not just born again, it was born with resurrection power. In the depth of itself, it found wings. In the very depth of itself, it found wings. Now, sometimes we are like that caterpillar. Don't you think on that? We are crawling. We're just like that caterpillar, we're crawling. Wallowing in old ideas that no longer serve us. Being locked in desperate straits due to fears of our own creation. Entertaining thoughts of being powerless, not sure of where to go or what we can do. Imagine. Imagine what would happen if we took the lesson of the caterpillar and truly, not just talked about it, but truly went within. And in going within, finding our strength. See, when we turn within for real, we'll find the Christ of ourselves. That's our strength. And when we find that strength and we embrace it and begin to meditate, and see, in our meditation, what we do is we become one. We align with the I am that we are. We align with all the power and the glory that there is. We align with the presence of God. And see, after we are conscious of that alignment, we come out of that meditation and we stand up and we are ready to confront whatever it is. We're ready to go wherever it is that we decide to go. 
We're ready to give life to new ideas because we believe that we're empowered to do that. We're ready to live as though, you know, life was our great journey, our great adventure, and we move without fear. We release all the superstitions of the past that have held us in a place of dormancy. And we have a greater sense of empowerment. Those visions of the greater life that we see for ourselves, now we believe, yes, it's possible. And we're going to move really now truly as a possibility thinkers. What was we found our wings. And now we can fly. Imagine. The ancients had a word for that. It said this. Let the redeemed of God say so. When you feel that you've been redeemed, then you will say so. I want each and every one of you right now just to say that. Say that I am redeemed. I am redeemed. You see, and when you say that from a place of feeling your power, yes, you're redeemed. And that redemption means that no longer will anything hold you back. That redemption means that you understand the power that spirit has given unto you. The gift of God which is yours. You understand that anything that comes against you is powerless unless you accept it as having power. You believe in the vision that you see for yourself. That it is a real possibility. And you will awaken every day. Every day. Saying, this is a day God has made for me, and I will grab the reins, and I'll go forth with full excitement and anticipation and expectation that greater good is mine. You know, Reverend Lisa, I share with you guys so often, I'm not here, but I'm watching the service on Zoom. And I've seen her say, okay, we're going to have testimony service. And we want folk to come up and testify, and, and there'll be one or two. But for the most part, everyone's just sitting there looking, right? And they're sitting there looking for a couple of reasons. One, they feel that they have no testimony, or they don't believe what it is that they've been hearing, and that's the reason they don't have a testimony. Or they are afraid to speak of the one that they have. So what has happened? They've given over to fear. And fear has locked them in place. They're not willing to share. They're not willing to be the light that they are. They're not willing to allow themselves to be an illumined being. They're not allowing their word to be a word of encouragement to someone else unknown. And folk, listen, if you are afraid to share it in here, you are afraid to share it out there. And then we wonder why there is so much violence everywhere. If nothing else this year, one of your goals be that I'm casting out all fear. Get rid of it. Because not only does it hold you back on little things, it's holding you back on the great things. Be like the caterpillar. Go within. And when you go within, you will find that strength. You go within, you can merge with your Christ self. And when you come out, come out with wings and take off lying. Peace and blessings to you this morning.